Hey everyone, I wanted to talk today about the opportunistic bacteria and the potential autoimmune triggers. This is a course I put together to teach functional medicine practitioners and naturopaths all about the GI map, a DNA stool test. And I wanted to zone in today on the potential autoimmune triggers because for those of you who see autoimmune conditions in your practice, it's probably a lot of you. Anything from autoimmune thyroiditis, psoriasis, psoriatic arthritis, systemic sclerosis, Crohn's disease, ulcerative colitis, type 1 diabetes, or rheumatoid arthritis, ankylosing spondylitis. There has been a gut association with these autoimmune conditions. And in the right person with the correct genetic potential, these autoimmune triggers have been associated with the onset of autoimmunity. And I have seen this come up a lot in my practice of those who have either pronounced signs and symptoms of autoimmunity and their antibodies are present or not present, I do find that these autoimmune triggers are being found on the GI map and successful eradication of these triggers has been associated, and I see this clinically, with a reduction in symptoms and a reduction in antibodies. I also wanted to mention that there's new research on IBS, primarily IBS diarrheal type, to have an infectious component to it, specifically Campylobacter. So IBS diarrhea type following the onset of food poisoning. There is some research on that as well. So I just want to do a brief overview. If you're interested in learning more, this course is available. But we're looking at here how various types of bacteria influence inflammation, influence homeostasis, as well as immune tolerance. So it's really looking at having the right balance of the gut microbiome to promote immune tolerance versus autoimmunity. Here is a great overview of the autoimmune associations. Again, Citrobacter, this one has been associated with infectious IBS, primarily the diarrheal type, as well as rheumatoid arthritis, Klebsiella and Crohn's disease, ulcerative colitis. A lot of these have been associated with rheumatoid arthritis, as well as looking at Yersinia, that one's not listed here, but Yersinia in those who have autoimmune thyroid tendencies. Now, how does this happen? When we are looking at how microbes create systemic pathology, we are looking at molecular mimicry. So in the case of bacteria that are triggering rheumatoid arthritis, these bacteria have antigens or proteins on their surfaces that resemble the type 11 collagen in the small joints. So what happens is as the immune system creates antibodies to fight off the pathogens, the antigens, because they are similar on the surface of, in the, for instance, rheumatoid arthritis, they're similar to the type 11 collagen. So as a byproduct, the joints are being affected as well. And that is the concept of molecular mimicry. The other one here, again, this is where it's listed, Yersinia and Graves and Hashimoto's, Streptococcus and Pandas. We have always heard about the association between chlamydia and reactive arthritis. So this is just going beyond what is currently known and taught. There are ways that bacteria can trigger autoimmunity. And this course will go into more of the research as well as what the GI map shows so that you can effectively look at that in your practice. Proteus infections in the large intestine as well as proteus infections in the urinary tracts. You can have subclinical proteus infections, not even know you have an infection in terms of a classic UTI, but there is an association between proteus and rheumatoid arthritis. So anyone who comes to me with rheumatoid arthritis previously diagnosed diagnosed, or we're looking at testing to see if rheumatoid arthritis, if those antibodies are elevated. We're also looking at running a urinalysis to look for proteus specifically in those patients. So I hope this was helpful for you, giving you an idea between how you can use functional medicine, specifically gut testing, to help with those who have autoimmunity. There is so much that links gut health to various different components of the patient's signs and symptoms. So the GI map I not only use for patients who have classic GI symptoms, but I'm also running it in those with autoimmunity, I'm running it in those with chronic iron deficiency, I'm running it in those 
who have um, significant adrenal fatigue symptoms, I'm running it in those who have muscle pain and joint pain, really anyone who comes to me, I am looking at gut as a major player and suggesting a stool test. The last one that I want to mention here is the H. pylori infection is associated with those who have autoimmune thyroiditis as well. And here's a study, this study was in um, mice, but nevertheless, there is studies out there. And the keynotes here are infective agents have been implicated in the pathogenesis of autoimmunity. And this study specifically looked at the prevalence of thyroid peroxidase antibodies. If they are positive, they're more frequently those who have positive anti-TPO antibodies have a underlying H. pylori infection. So if someone comes to me and I'm looking at the GI map and H. pylori is present, Possibly if the virulence factors are positive or negative, we talk more in the course of what those virulence factors mean. If they have elevated TPO antibodies and they have the presence of H. pylori, even without positive virulence factors, I am going ahead and using things like mastigum and oil of oregano to help lower that. So if you're interested in learning more, the course is available for you. I'll link it in this email below. And if you have any questions, please let me know.